Hello beautiful people, it's David here with some more drawing. I have thought I'd do another speed paint because it's been a while since I've done one, but I didn't want to share this one honestly for a long long time because it's part of a kind of secret project that I'm doing and it's going to take a while for me to get that done, maybe not till November or December, but for now I thought, you know, this was kicking around and I'm really happy with how this drawing came out even though I'm clearly making fun of myself for not getting the stupid stinger right. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a I had quite a few issues. I haven't seen this speed paint in a while, but I could not get this stinger right. Clearly I'm doing Beedrill from Pokemon as you saw by my references that I'm using. And uh, and here I am looking how to draw a cone and a drill. <laughs> Because I just can't figure my life out. Oh, I see. Yeah, this is how I got the idea for him coming at you more instead of just kind of hanging out there. He was supposed to kind of like be going down Stinger first, but now I made the weapon this and the Stinger's just kind of hanging out because I just could not draw. I can't draw cones, honestly. That's what I learned about myself. <laughs> but for this, I actually kind of set a little challenge for myself. I was trying deliberately to draw in Ken Sugimori's style, who you guys know is like the original art artist for a lot of the official artworks of the Pokemon. It's like kind of that classic watercolor look. You see it in my references. So this entire speed paint is me experimenting with different things. Just trying to find a good brush to kind of get that. I wanted it to have like all those non-smooth like I don't know what the I don't know if artifacts is the right word I'm so still new to digital art but kind of like having that like hand-drawn look to it I didn't want it to have such a smooth look to it like you see especially around his head and eyes I really liked how fuzzy and kind of messy the lines were it kind of lend itself but it's still like a bit bold and confident so I kind of liked that about this brush that I ended up using for the line art and here I am experimenting with other things, trying to get this drill look right. I'm, I'm actually really proud of how that drill ended up looking, because it was just, you saw the process right there, just me trying to figure it out. You could see some Ken Sugimori art there that's actually going to stay on screen for a little bit, but that's kind of what I was going for. And the coloring, I really love Ken Sugimori's coloring style, just that watercolor look, possibly because of nostalgia more than anything else, but... I really kind of dug the process of trying to replicate. Repl can I talk today? <laughs> replicate it. And look at, like, honestly, like, I don't like tooting my own horn or anything, but I really love how the legs and arm came out. Like, the way that shading worked, like, I, I just got really lucky. Krita has a really good brush. I don't use any custom stuff, I just use what the program came with. And yeah, the. And it's kind of hard because when I'm just doing the flats, it's hard to kind of like get an idea of like what it will look like with shading. Also because I'm using a coloring style that I'm so unfamiliar with. But I really do like how the watercolor look came out and just a little bit of detailing on that drill. Yeah, the more I look at this drill, the more thrilled I am with, I, like again, like I don't, I'm not very good with art and I haven't done it in a while since I was like a child. So when I see things kind of just come out the way I had them in my head, I. I still get like really proud of myself, so I guess that'll that'll fade as I, you know, do more. And here's me trying to figure out how shading works on a tree. <laughs> I yeah, looking at this now, like there's certain things I really enjoy about this. The drill for one, and also the, the wing. I really like how the wing came out. Uh, granted, this is so not perfect. I as you can see, I gave up on the stinger, and that's just kind of like way too far up on his body. It definitely should have been down more, but I think I merged too many layers that it would have just been a pain in the ass to kind of bring back down. So I just kind of left it. You know, I I, I I bit the bullet on that one. But overall, I'm happy with how this whole thing came out. Wanted to put a nice little background in, kind of get that little watercolor painted background going on. Now that I'm looking at this, the that line on the beehive looks really intense, and I don't know if that was a good idea or not. Like, when I look at the whole full finished piece, like, I don't think about it, so I guess that's okay. But just looking at this in the process video, I'm just like, huh. And here's me playing with some shading. I still don't know if I like selecting and going in with a darker color more than creating the dark clipping mask and then erasing away the highlights, if that makes any sense. I, I can't tell what I enjoy more. And then just me creating some artificial shadows and detailing the sky, and that's that's Beedrill. 
I, I'm really happy with how this came out. It definitely isn't, doesn't hold a candle to what Ken Sugimori does, but I'm, I enjoyed the process because it had me drawing in a way that's very different than the style that I've been doing. But I'm also new at this, so it was just cool to kind of flex different muscles and try different tools out. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Now this is Dave out, peace out, like the video if you liked the video, comment if you haven't, and subscribe, smack the bell, all that good stuff. This is Dave out, peace out. Bye.